for example, checking account or personal account. The customer selects an account. The ATM prompts for an amount. The bank customer enters an amount. Who is this use case written for? Eventually for the developer who has to write that code to make all this happen, right? Okay, whenever you interact with an ATM machine, you know some developer in Wells Fargo had written that code that is giving all these prompts to you, right? But it's also written for the product managers, for the business team, because they own the ATM, they own the functionality, right? So this use case is used by, also by QA people. Quality people have to then test this ATM in their you know, lab to see, hey, is this machine doing? For example, suppose the ATM doesn't prompt for an account and assumes checking account. So the QA engineer now opens a defect and says, hey, I didn't get a prompt. And then the developer will say, oh, that's because this customer only has a checking account, doesn't have any other account. Therefore, no need for a prompt. And then the BA will say, hold on, if that's the case, why don't we change this use case to say, if multiple accounts prompt for an account, if not, just ask for the amount, right? So it's all about the BA making sure the requirements are solid. The requirements are as per the behavior of the software. And no one should have any confusion why it prompts or doesn't prompt. It should be listed. Or it should prompt if there are multiple accounts and not prompt if there's only one account. The bank customer enters the amount. The card ID, the PIN amount and account is sent to the bank as a transaction, right? The bank consortium replies with a go or a no-go decision. The money is dispensed, the bank card is returned, the receipt is printed, exactly in this order. So basically it's like uh, a flow chart where you say yes and no, yes. For Wonderful, a absolutely, you got it right Bharat. This use case description is then translated to what we call a use, a flow chart or an activity diagram that has those yes and no and branches and forking and things like that. Exactly, exactly. So many times in requirements documents, you will say, you will see a use case description followed by a activity diagram or a flow chart, what you call it for that. Because you know sometimes it gets hard to read all this. It becomes easier if it is uh, in a a flow chart later on because they say a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Okay, so this was the 